All right, in the first couple of videos, we created our databases and then we also created the entity classes as well as the JPA controller classes. In this video, we're going to create the user interface to enable the user to interact with the database. Now, to begin that, the first thing we're going to do is to modify the persistence.xml uh, file. Now, the persistence.xml file is the one I'm pointing to. You'll find it in the meta-inf uh, package. When you double click on that, it gives you a visual uh, uh, representation of the XML file. In fact, you can go and see the actual XML source, but it's easier to work with the visual uh, interface. Now, uh, everything else remains the same. This persistence unit name we're going to come back to. In fact, if you want to copy it right now, select it and copy it. We're going to use it shortly. Coming down the screen where you look at table generation strategy, by default, it's set to none. What I've done is I've set mine to create. This will enable our database to create these tables on the fly. Because remember, with an embedded database, every time you run the app, the database is recreated. Now, this is one of the disadvantages of using an embedded uh, database as compared to an external database like MySQL, for example. All right, ensure the file is saved and close it. Now, right click on uh, the project name, new. What we're going to do is we're going to create a JFrame form. Right? We're going to call this form add author. And the package that we're going to put it into is school library. All right, just to double check, add author.java is in the school library package. Okay, now in order to input data into my database, I'll need some input boxes or text fields. I'm going to copy that, paste it and paste it again it doesn't matter the order in which they come of course with text fields we're going to need labels paste it and paste it again All right so the first one will state we go to the properties the text it will say first name second one surname and then it will be the email All right, the J text fields, I prefer them to be empty and not to have the, the name of the, the field. All right, the problem with this is that it uh, squashes the text field, but that's simple. I'll just drag and drop. And then I'll do the same with the next two. All right, and to make sure they're all the same size. I click the first uh, text field and then I keep the control button on my uh, computer uh, keyboard pressed. If you've got a Mac computer, you'll use the CMD command button and keep it pressed and click on the other two. So you select all three and then right click and in the same size box, click on same width. You'll find they're all the same width. And lastly, I'll need a button. All right, so I'm going to place a button in there. All right, so what is this button going to do? This button is going to insert the text that the user inputs into the database. So let's change the caption of that button to say insert. All right, 
and now to program the handler for this button what will happen when this button is clicked so I double click the button okay in the event handler of the button we're going to do three things the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a button ob uh, an author object the second thing we're going to do is we're going to capture the information from the text fields and populate the author object with uh, uh, the, te the, field, the information from the text fields and lastly we're going to store that auto object into the database. Alright, let's get started with that. So the first thing is to create the author object. We'll call it A1 as you can see I'm not, I'm minimizing typing by using control space Right, so a1 dot set. Let's set the first name. One dot set. First name to J text field one dot get text. Looks about right. A1 dot set. Surname to J text field two. Let me just make sure. That I've got the text field names right. So I've kind of got them mixed up here because if you look at the properties at the bottom here. It says J text field 2 corresponds to first name. So I'm going to actually move that over. And there we have it. So J text field 1 should correspond to the first name. And J text field 2 should correspond to the surname. Let's see if that is indeed this, uh, the case. And 2 there corresponds to surname and three corresponds oh I've got a four that's fine so I continue and a one dot set email to J text field dot get text all right so the first step is over I've created my object and I've populated the object with information from the text fields the next thing to do is now to create a JPA controller class for authors so I'm going to need to create an instance of a JPA control class but before I do that I'm going to need an entity manager factory. So I type in EMF control space. There we go. Entity manager factory. This is just the way that the JPA handles um, a creation of your uh, JPA controller classes. In order to create a controller class, you need an entity management manager factory. I'll call this one EMF is equal to persistence dot create entity manager factory and in there I'm going to put in the name of this persistence unit that I've copied from uh, persistence.xml so it's school library pu that is the name of the persistence unit alright so I close this and back in my uh, uh, button event handler between the double quotes I place the name of the persistence unit all right, so just let's look at this again. To create an instance of Entity Manager Factory, you need to call a static method called Create Entity Manager Factory, that is in class Persistence, and you pass it the name of the Persistence unit. All right, now that we've got our Entity Manager Factory uh, set up, we can now create a JPA controller for authors. 
So authors JPA controller, I simply type AJC, the letters corresponding to all the capital letters in the name. Authors JPA controller, let's call this one AJC is equal to new authors JPA controller and I pass it EMF. You can see uh, NetBeans has placed it uh, there automatically for me. And finally, I use uh, the JPA controller to create and create in this case means to persist this author. So it's automatically put in A1. So create A1 means take the values or take the object A1 and store it to my database. And that's, uh, uh, that's done. Now we can insert information into this database, but we will not be able to see anything as yet. In order to see what's actually happening in our database, we're going to have to create a table. So let's create a form with a table, right? So I go back to school library and I'm going to create a Jake frame form. I'm going to call it show authors. All right, now firstly, I want you to see that I've put it into the wrong package. It's in the default package rather than the school library package. Now it's very simple to move it over. Simply drag it and drop it over school library. Click on the refactor button and there we have it, show authors. All right, so I'm going to go to the palette and I'm going to find a table, place the table in. All right, so I've got my table, but now I need to bind my table to the author's database table. So whatever is in the author's database table will reflect on this table. You can do this without a line of code. Simply right click, click on bind and elements, import data to form and you choose the database connection. Remember we named our database connection library. And the moment you select that, it shows the tables that are in the library uh, database. So I choose the authors table and OK that. Now the instance I do that, I've selected the authors table from the uh, library database. It's showing me all of the fields that are in the table. But I, what I need to do is to not show ID and books collection. We don't want those to show as yet. So I move those all to the left. And now I bring them to the right one at a time in the order that I want them to be displayed in my table. All right. So first name, surname and email. That's all I want to show. Obviously, you'll never show your ID in your table. The ID is simply for the database purposes. It's not for the user purpose. The user should never see the ID. And books collection will come back to you at a later stage. All right. So I've got first name, surname, email. OK, that and I see the modification in my table. Fantastic. It's a very simple JFrame form. There's a lot more you can do to this, but I'm going to do this just to demonstrate what, what it's capable of. All right, we're almost there. Just one last thing we need to do. What we need to do is we need to instruct our Java program which form to open up when the application starts. And for starters, I think we're going to open up the add author form. All right, now how do we do this? We go to the main uh, class, which is the school library class. The school library class, as you can see, has the main method. Now, how do I, uh, how do I instruct it to open up the add author class or the add author form? Very simple. I create an instance of add author. simply call it AA is equal to new add author, right? And then I set its visibility to true. AA dot set visibility to true and I'm done. So what's going to happen? The sequence of events that's going to take place is firstly, when you run the program, the school library class is run because it has the main method. Once the main method starts, it's going to create an instance of the add author form and then it's going to set its visibility to true. Once the visibility is set to true, the add author form will show up. All right. Now, the add author form will allow us to create a new entry into our database. And once we click on the insert button, it's going to create the instance of 
the, the author and add it to the database. But I want it to do one last thing. After it's created the instance and persisted it to the database, I want it to refocus onto the table, onto the show authors table. So we're going to do this in the exact same way that we did before. We create an instance of the show authors class and we set its visibility to true. It's as simple as that. SA dot set visible to true. All right, time to run our app and see if everything is okay. It takes some time uh, during the first build. So I'm going to add as author Tom Sawyer email ts at abc.com insert and there we have it Tom Sawyer this was a test uh, object that I inserted earlier on but Tom Sawyer is back there let's add another item sk at whatever dot com insert and there we have it Stephen King is added now I've got too many forms open because I've, I haven't created functionality to uh, remove older forms so it'll just keep accumulating forms but we will add this on later in the next video we look at uh, making this app a little more user friendly